Hi everyone, this is Chicho. Welcome to my channel and welcome to the live stream. Today is February 20th, 2024, and we're doing part three of reading the Iran Contra scandal trading cards. We've read in part one cards number 12 to 14, uh, 12 to uh, no, 12, uh, 1 to 12. And in part two, we read cards number 13 to card number 24. And today we're going to read cards number 25 to number 36. And these cards are basically an amazing history of uh, what took place in the 1980s with the Iran-Contra scandal. Uh, there's a lot of history there, it connects up to a lot of politics, a lot of economics, a lot of deep state, a lot of CIA, a lot of FBI, a lot of war mongering, and a lot of insane people that have been given a lot of power to create a lot of chaos in our societies. Okay, and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to continue our reading and um, learn more. Uh, about what took place and some of the characters, some of the players that were involved uh, uh, during that period and before and after because uh, the people here that we read, some of them were still around, are still active uh, many, many years after the Iran-Contra affair ended and they were active and in power many years before the Iran Contra scandal took place. Okay. And what we're going to do is read card number 25. Okay. Card number 25. William Buckley. Okay. Card number 25 of the Iran Contra scandal trading cars from Eclipse Comics William Buckley William Buckley and these came out in as before 1988 okay card number 25 CIA station chief William Buckley William Buckley was the CIA chief of station in Beirut, Lebanon, when on March 16, 1984, he was kidnapped by Muslim Shia fundamentalists. His abduction sent shock waves through the intelligence community, for Buckley was the CIA's top terrorism expert. CIA director William Casey's decision to send Buckley to Beirut in 1983 had been doubly dangerous. First, Buckley was an obsessive uh, wo womanizer whose flamboyant ways had led to breaches of security while he was stationed in Vietnam in the early 1970s. Second, his cover had been blown in Pakistan in 1979 when Muslim fundamentalists had ransacked the U.S. Embassy in Islamabad, gaining access to high-secret U.S. intelligence. Casey's decision violated a CIA rule not to send an agent who had been burnt into the same theater of operations for at least five years. In November 1984, ex-CIA agent Theodore Shackley, C-Car 24, who had known uh, Buckley in Vietnam, went to Hamburg, West Germany, to meet with uh, Manucher Gor Gorbenefar, C-Car 26, an exiled Iranian uh, wheeler dealer living in Paris who claimed he could arrange an arms for hostages ransom deal for the release of Buckley. In October of 1985, two months after the first U.S.-Israeli shipment of TOW missiles to Iran, the CIA received reliable information that Buckley had been taken to Iran and tortured to death the preceding, uh, the preceding June. It is still not known what secrets, if any, he revealed to his captors. William 
Buckley. William Buckley. Oh, look at the needle. That's card number 25. Card number 26. Who is this guy? Manucher Gorbanifar. Manucher Gorbanifar. Gorbanifar. Manucher Gorbanifar. Look at this guy. Ollie was here. Look at all the writing. Nietzsche. Nietzsche is dead. God. <laughs> Look at this one. The thing that says Nietzsche is dead. God. Oh, there's uh, Farsi writing as well. What does that say? I can't read Farsi, so I don't know what that says. For, uh, don't know. I'm a Contra, haha. <clears throat> o N plus F H. God is dead, Nietzsche. Haha, <laughs> that's what it is. Check that out. So, quote, God is dead, Nietzsche. And then it says, Nietzsche is dead, God. Haha. Uh -huh. Humor in the Iran Contra trading cards. Manucher Gorbanifar. Let's check this out. Card number 26. Arms Merchant. Manucher Gorbanifar. By November 1984, when expatriate Iranian arms dealer Manucher Gorbanifar offered ex-CIA agent Theodore Shackley his help in freeing hostage William Buckley, see card 24 and 25. He had already uh, failed three CIA lie detector tests. Four months earlier, the CIA had issued a, quote, burn notice, end quote, of Gorba, warning that he should be regarded as an intelligence fabricator and a new one, a new nuisance. Nevertheless, Michael Leiden, terrorism consultant to the NSC, and Israeli agent David Kimchi, C car 25, vouch for Gurban Afar to National Security Advisor Robert Mc, McFarland, C car 28. Leiden called Gurban Afar one of the most honest, educated, honorable men I have ever known. Thus, Gorbanifar became the middleman for the first five arms for hostages shipments of TOW and Tomahawk missiles to Iran. Later, McFarlane was to refer to Gorbanifar as a borderline moron. <laughs> After the first three missile shipments brokered by Gorbanifar and Leiden, Produced only one hostage, CIA Director William Casey ordered another lie detector test. Gorbanifar failed again on every question but his name <laughs> and nationality. Afterwards, he appeared at Leiden's house claiming he had been physically injured during the test. Richard Secord became Leiden's replacement, but Gorbanifar was allowed to broker two more arms deals. Oliver North testified that Gorbanifar was suspected of being an Israeli agent. North also said that Gorbanifar had given him the idea to divert profits from Iranian arms deals to the Contras in a men's room. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the people who run our countries and spend 
hundreds of billions of dollars of our taxpayer money making deals in men's washrooms Card number 26. Card number 27. Card number 27. Who's this guy? David Kimchi. David Kimchi. Card number 27, Senior Israeli Intelligence Official, David Kimchi. David Kimchi, a 30-year Mossad Israeli intelligence veteran, directed Israeli Foreign Ministry until 1986. In February 1982, Kimchi and National Security Advisor Robert McFarlane, C-Card 28, arrived at a secret plan, pl arrived at a secret plan for Israeli participation in U.S. covert actions in Central America. First, Israeli military advisors trained uh, Guatemalan and Honduran armed forces. Then, after Isra Israel captured tons of East Bloc weapons from the PLO during its June 1982 invasion of Lebanon, Israel offered to send these weapons to the Contras in return for favorable prices on U.S. fighter planes. The Reagan administration agreed to this proposal, and the Pentagon assigned Richard Secord, C-Card No. 19, to oversee the weapons shipments. Shortly after being visited by the NC NSC's Michael Leiden in May 1985, Kimchi began to promote Manucher Gor Gorbenfar's credentials to American officials, see card number 26. By August, he had convinced McFarland and Oliver North, see card number 13, that Gorbenfar's contacts could produce CIA agent William Buckley and other hostages, see card number 25, in return for generous shipments of weapons to Iran. The Iran Initiative Arms for Hostages plan failed, but Israel, Israel continued to supply weapons to the Contras through 1986. One arms network was run by former Mossad agent named Mike Herrera, a close associate of Panama's drug dealing General Noriega, Manuel Noriega, while supplying East Bloc arms to the Contras. Herrera was also shipping Medellin cartel cocaine out of Panama. See card number 11. Mossad, working closely with the CIA to send weapons to Iran and weapons to South America. You can't make this shit up for real. For real. Number 27. Card number 28. Look at this good boy holding his Bible. Who is this? Who is this? Robert McFarlane. Robert McFarlane. Is that a dunce cap? birthday cake and a bible or is that his birthday hat on robert mcfarland card number 28 national security advisor robert bud mcfarland Marine Lieutenant Colonel Robert Bud McFarlane 
was one of the original planners of the Contra War against Nicaragua. In 1981, as an assistant to Secretary of State Alexander Haig, McFarland authored, quote, taking the war to Nicaragua, end quote, and led the restricted interagency group RIG, which formulated and carried out an administra the administration's Central American policies. During his tenure as National Security Advisor from October 1983 through December 1985, McFarland oversaw Lieutenant Colonel Oliver North's activities, see card number 13. He repeatedly lied to Congress about North's actions and his own because he believed their actions were illegal uh, under the Boland Amendment. McFarland successfully solicited contra aid from foreign governments and also took part in the unsuccessful attempts to free hostage hostage CIA agent William Buckley, see card number 25, 26, and 27. When McFarland led a delegation to Iran in May 1986, carrying a cake and spare parts for Hawk anti-aircraft missiles, it was at the request of John Poindexter, his successor as National Security Advisor, see card number 35. McFarland was the natural choice having been instrumental in persuading the president to authorize the original Israeli U.S. shipment of TOW missiles to Iran in August 1985. When three days of meetings failed to produce even one hostage, the delegation came home empty-handed, and a broken bud McFarland returned to private life. On February 9, 1987, Robert McFarland tried to kill himself with an overdose of Valium, saying he had failed his country. Robert McFarland, card number 28. Card number 29, another hostage, Eugene Hazenoff, Hazenfoss, Eugene Hazenfoss, Hazenfoss, Eugene Hazenfoss. Card number 29, CIA cargo kicker, Eugene Hazen, Hazenfoss. On October 5th, 1986, a C-123 transport plane carrying arms to the Contras was shot down by Sandinista troops. The Reagan administration denied any government role in the flight, but subsequent evidence proved otherwise. Eugene Hazenfoss, the cargo kicker and lone survivor was found to be a longtime CIA employee, as were the two American pilots who died in the crash. All three had previously been employed by Air America, the CIA's airline in Southeast Asia. They were being paid by Robert Secord, C card number 19. The airplane belonged to Southern Air Transport a CIA proprietary. The airplanes, the planes wreckage yielded detailed flight logs. Robert Owens business card, C card number 14, and a yellow Air America operator's manual. The most damaging evidence came from Hazen Foss himself. He told a press conference that his supervisors in the operation, Max Gomez and Ramon, Ramon Medina were working for Vice President George Bush, C card 32. Ramon Medina was later identified as Luis Pasada Carriles, a shooter team 
Alam Alumnus, see card 23, and an escapee from a Venezuelan jail where he'd been held in connection with the bombing of a Cuban civilian airline, which resulted in the death of 73 people. Max Gomez is the nom de gure of longtime CIA agent Felix Rodriguez, see card number 30. Eugene Hasenfoss was found guilty of invading Nicaragua, Nicaraguan airspace by a Sandinista tribunal and then pardoned by Nicaraguan President Daniel Ortega. After his release, he filed suit against the CIA for damages. <laughs> the balls on this guy Eugene has a boss card number 29 card number 30 Felix Rodriguez, Felix Rodriguez, who's this delightful person? Execute, Guavara executes, Phoenix. Oh, Bay of Pigs, look at that, Bay of Pigs, Bay of Pigs. This guy was involved in the Bay of Pigs, CIA, I see CIA. Business, Cuba, Vietnam. Look at that torture. Oh my. This guy's got a lot of names attached to him. Felix Rodriguez. Let's check out who this guy is. Of course, card number 30. Former CIA operative. Let's get this focused. Former CIA operative Felix Rodriguez. Felix Rodriguez, former CIA agent and alumnus of the CIA's shooter team, CCAR 23, is best known for his role in the killing of Che Guevara in 1967. From 1969 to 72, he flew hundreds of missions for the CIA in Vietnam as a helicopter gunship pilot and counterinsurgency expert. He was shot down at least five times. His superior officer was Donald Gregg, C card number 35, 31, who reported to Theodore Shackley, C card 24. In 1981, Rodriguez went to Honduras to help Argentina counterterrorism specialist specialists train Contra soldiers there. In 1983, he presented plans to Donald Gregg outlining the use of mobile strike units to attack rebel bases in El Salvador. Gregg forwarded the plans to Robert McFarland, C card number 28. Oliver North, C card number, C card number 13, sent Rodriguez to Ilopango military air, air base in El Salvador, where in 1984, he was directing Contra resupply operations for Richard Secor's enterprise, C card number 19 and 20. Flying helicopter missions for the El Salvadoran military and arranging safe passage for Medellin cartel cocaine en route from Panama to the US, C card 11. Rodriguez was the controller, control agent in charge of the ill-fated Hazanoff flight into Nicaragua, C card number 29. Between 1983 and 1986, Rodriguez had 17 me meetings with Greg, three of which included Vice President George Bush, C card number 32. When Hazenfoss was shot down, the first call the first call Rodriguez made was to push Bush's office. A former girlfriend has reported that Rodriguez carries a concealed weapon and likes to shoot out street lights for fun known as the ayatollah of the contras he is said to still wear the
the wristwatch he took from the dead body of Che Guevara. Wow. Felix Rodriguez. Do we see Che's name in the background? Bay of Pigs, CIA. Is that C for Che? We got Cuba up top there. Now. Card number 30. Look at this guy. Donald Gregg. Donald Gregg. Vice Presidential Security Advisor Donald Gregg. In the wake of the Hazen Foss debacle, see card number 29. Donald Gregg, National Security Advisor to Vice President George Bush, see card number 32, tried to distance, distance himself from the activities of his old friend Felix Rodriguez, see card number 30. Gregg stated publicly. That he didn't know of Rodriguez's involvement in the Contra supply network until August 8, 1986, although he did admit that he and Felix were still fast friends. Greg took credit for bringing Rodriguez and Oliver North, C card number 13, together, but insisted that they had not confided their activities to him, adhering instead to the need to know principle. Rodriguez, on the other hand, broadcast his ties to Bush and Greg to anyone who would listen. According to Richard Secord, card number 19, the relationship between Greg and Rodriguez became so notorious and led to such widespread public speculation about Vice President Bush's involvement with the Contra supply operations that John Singellob, C card number 7, wrote to North in September 1986 saying that Rodriguez's daily contact with Bush's office could damage President Reagan and the Republican Party, see card number 36. Clearly, Greg's dis disclaimers in regard to Rodriguez were intended to limit the injury to George Bush's reputation. When Oliver North was assigned to the National Security Council in 1981, Greg was the head of the NSC's Intelligence Directorate, which was responsible for all the covert action projects undertaken by the NSC. Donald Greg. Donald Greg. The guy's so nasty, the camera doesn't even want to focus on him again. <laughs> Crazy. Nasty people, nasty people. Card number 32. Skeletons in his closet. Known as the wimp. George Bush went to war to prove that he wasn't a wimp. Right. George Bush Sr. What a piece of work this guy is. George Bush Sr. George Bush Senior. Card number thirty two.
Vice President George Bush. Vice President George Bush, head of the Drug in Interdiction Tax Task Force and the Counterterrorism Task Force, Chairman of the Crisis Pre-Planning Group of the Special Situation Group, with oversight authority for public and covert actions related to terrorism policy, former CIA director from 1976 to 1977, and patron of the Felix Rodriguez, and patron of Felix Rodriguez, C card number 30, claimed that on foreign policy decisions, he was left out of the loop. According to the Iran Contra Committee's report, the vice president attended several meetings on the Iran initiative, but none of the participants could recall his views. However, John Poindexter, then President Reagan's National Security Advisor, C card number 35, had written a memo on February 1st, 1986, which stated in reference to the Iran initiative, the President and Vice President are solid in taking the position that we have to try. As to Bush's knowledge of Rodriguez's role in the Contra Aid Network, there is a briefing memo from April from an April 30, 1986 meeting between, between Bush and Rodriguez listing the subjects to be discussed, the st status of the war in El Salvador and the resupply of the Contras. In 1988, Bush, the Republican presidential nominee, nominee chose as his running mate Indiana Senator Dan Quayle, see card number 14. When a memo from then FBI head J. Edgar Hoover was found stating that Mr. Mr. George Bush of the CIA had been briefed on November 23, 1963, about the reaction of the anti Castro Cuban exiles in Miami to the assassination of President Kennedy, Bush's aides denied he was, he was this George Bush. But allegations continued continue that Bush is concealing long-standing ties to the CIA and to Cuban exiles such as Rodriguez. Card number 32. This delightful monster. George Bush Sr. Many people connect George Bush Sr. to assassination on John F. Kennedy. Supposedly he was in Texas having drinks while Kennedy was assassinated. Card number 33 Edwin Mies the third fed seven five nine zero two nine Z Edwin Mies the third it was Edwin Meese the third attorney general card number 33 Edmund Meese the third attorney general after the has and Foss crash see card number 29 US Attorney General Edmund Meese the third delayed FBI and customs investigations of southern air transport the cia company which had owned the down plane but the u.s missile sales to iran were exposed in lebanese journal on no november 4th 1986 and a full-scale investigation became inevitable Mies told the press on november 25th that while on a fact-finding mission for the president, 
he had discovered a memo in Oliver North's office indicating that profits from the sale of missiles to Iran had been diverted to the Contras. Meese stated that when he informed President Reagan of, this, of his discovery, the president had claimed total ignorance. During the ensuing investigation, the question of whether or not Reagan had known about the diversion was debated at length. The more serious issue, the ballist basic uh, illegality of the war against Nicaragua was all but ignored. Mises' inept handling of the investigation, his failure to secure North's office or to take notes while questioning the principles, allowed much, uh, much evidence to be destroyed. Edwin Mies was investigated repeatedly concerning allegations of influence peddling and shady financial deals. He finally resigned on July 5, 1988, claiming the investigation had vindicated him. Subsequent publications of the special prosecutor's report indicated, however, that Mies may well have committed criminal acts. Whether or not he obstructed justice during his term as Chief Law Enforcement Office Officer of the U.S. deserves further investigation. Edwin Mies. Edwin Mies. The third. Oh my God, sharing a fair bit of info about these people. These monsters don't disappear, eh? Card number 34. Who is this? Fawn Hall. Fawn Hall. Better shred than red. Ha <laughs> ha. Arthuro Grice Jr. Fawn Hall. Lots of glare on the card. Fawn Hall. Better shred than red. Secretary, yeah. Card number 34, Secretary, Fawn Hall. Sometimes you have to go above the written law, explained Fawn Hall, devoted secretary of Oliver North. See card number 13. Hall felt that when North ordered her to destroy or alter government documents, he was heeding a call to obey a higher law. Hall testified that on the evening of November 21st, 1986, she helped shred a pile of documents, pile of documents a foot and a half high that included notes, telephone logs, and encoded messages. She stated that although shredding was done routinely on this particular night, so many material were shredded that the shredding machine jammed from the overload. According to Robert McFarlane, see car, card number 28, North had already shredded all key documents relating to the Iran initiative and the Contra supply operations by the afternoon of the 21st. The story of the shredding party suggested an element of haste which made the survival of the Iran Contra division memo found by attorney uh, general edwin meese c card number three more reliable more than a simple typist hall was deeply in enmeshed in, in the national security community she dated arthur Cru arthur cruz jr 
the son of one of Contra leaders and a Contra himself. Hull's mother were Robert, was Robert McFarland's secretary. Fawn Hall went on from Oliver North office to work as a secretary for the Navy with no access to classified materials. She has expressed hopes of becoming an actress. Fawn Hall. Fawn Hall. I wonder if she ever became an actress. There we go, Fawn. Your headshot. Card number thirty five John Point Dexter Findings Findings Nothing to see here, gang. John Point Dexter. Card number 35, National Security Advisor, John Point Dexter. Vice Admiral John M. Point Dexter served as President Reagan's National Security Advisor from December 1985 through November 25, 1986. He was known throughout his Navy career as an officer with a photographic memory who kept his superiors well informed. Point Dexter testified that he had made a very deliberate decision not to ask the president about the division uh, diversion of miss, missile profits to the Contras in order to provide some future deniability for the president if it ever leaked out. He further stated that Reagan would have approved if he had been asked. The following day, after Reagan announced that he would not have approved, Point Dexter explained that that is the whole idea of deniability. <laughs> Point Dexter testified concerning Oliver North activities, see card number 13, that I never believed that the Boland Amendment ever applied to the NS. C staff. This odd interpretation of the Boland Amendment by which Congress had meant to cut off all military aid to the Contras was supported by Edwin Mee, Mees, the President's legal advisor, C card number 33. Point Dexter, uh, Point Dexter repeatedly lied to Congress about NSC's role in helping the Contras. Like North, Point Dexter destroyed piles of documents, including, including, he said, the only copy of the presidential finding retroactively authorizing missile sales to Iran and characterizing these sales as a straight arms for hostages swap. In 1988, John Point Dexter was in, indic indicted, indicted for defrauding the U.S. government uh, and obstructing justice. John Point Dexter. And finally card number 36 Ronald Reagan just say don't just say don't Ronald 
Ronald Reagan the Puppet. Card number 36. The United States President Ronald Dutch Reagan. On May 15, 1987, President Ronald Wilson Reagan admitted that private support of the Contras was all my idea to begin with. End quote. Reagan saw the Contras as freedom fighters and the moral equivalent of our founding fathers. He saw the Sandinistas as Soviet proxies who have turned Nicaragua into a totalitarian dungeon. Focusing public and media attention on the real and imaginary shortcomings of the Nicaraguan Sandinistas served to distract attention from the brutal policies the Reagan administration had supported in Guatemala, El Salvador, and Honduras. Since 1980, 200,000 Central Americans have been killed. 160,000 of these were not Nicaraguan. The wars the U.S. supported in Central America are being waged with assassination programs, bombing of villages, forced relocation of hundreds of thousands of peasants, and the defoliation of thousands of acres using napalm and other chemicals. The Reagan administration gambled that as long as the U.S. lives, uh, lives were not being lost in large numbers, the U.S. public would tolerate and support this style of low-intensity conflict. As for Iran, Reagan had uh, con condemned its leaders as the uh, strangest collection of looney tunes and squalid criminals since the Third Reich. Because Ronald Reagan's supporters largely agreed with his assessment, the revelations that the Reagan administration had been selling weapons to Iran was a major low, major blow to Reagan's personal credibility and thus marked the downfall of his popularity. Ronald Reagan. Who's the puppet master? Who's the puppet master? What? Gang. The Iran Contra trading cards. 36 cards. Amazing history. Incredibly important period. Linking up people that are involved in Vietnam from the 1960s going all the way to the Reagan administration the Buddhist Bush administration and a lot of these players these actors were still involved in black ops in the US administration all the way to the 2000s incredible incredible Amazing reading, amazing reading. I have been dying to read these cards. I'm very happy that we got these done. I'll have the readings for each of these cards, all 36, loaded up individually as well as having all three segments loaded up in their entirety. And the full live streams are available online as we're doing these live streams. Uh, within a few days in almost all of our video sharing platforms. I hope you enjoyed gang. I'm going to go back to the live stream.